Hello YouTube and welcome to another review and this time we have Caesar Miniatures World War II British Army. This sets 40 figures and its scale is 172 coming in about 24 millimeters in height. This set I've wanted to review for quite some time as I think it does rank about one of the best British Army sets around or British infantry. First glance of this box. Um, it's a very small box. Um, I'm not used to how they come in, in the box actually. It's uh, already off the sprue and it's in a sealed plastic bag, uh, the components inside. So it was all a bit bizarre. Plenty of room in the box for these things to get nudged around in I guess, but uh, they're well sealed in a self-sealing bag. So um, it was a little bit of a surprise. I don't really know much about Caesar products, but um, yeah, it was certainly different. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, the figures are pretty much ready to go so there's no awkward cutting and trimming the sprue. They do come attached with sort of small little objects from the moulding but um, nothing major. At first glance you can see the artwork isn't exactly amazing, it looks like a really awkward looking watercolour. It's really not of a great standard in my opinion. If you want to sell these figures then I really think Caesar should try a lot harder with the box art and as I've probably repeated time and time again Airfix you know sometimes the kits have been a bit hit and miss here and there the model kits in general but their artwork is bang on and uh, they really should take a leaf out of that book. I know everything's online and people rarely go into shops but People are still looking online and they look at the pictures, so it does matter in my opinion. I date this set as around 1945, uh, four, sorry, to 45, so um, we're talking DD-ish. The figures themselves um, are of a good standard, I have to say. Uh, they are coming a grey plastic, which is sort of on the way to being quite brittle. I wouldn't say they're totally brittle, but they're on the way to being brittle. As I said, there's 40 figures. You can see on the uh, artwork there we have a flamethrower, a life boy as it's called. And this was a 1943 model of a hydrogen spark ignition. It was a little bit unreliable in damp weather. Um, it would fire up with a 10 cartridge shot. So you would have 10 cartridges in the front of the small device that he's holding there and you would fire one of these cartridges and that would ignite for about a 10 second burst. Um, it does look quite snazzy I have to say, it's quite a snazzy looking flamethrower to say the least. Uh, so, um, you know, I think there was about 7,000 of these made during the war, uh, so that's not a bad tidy sum. Obviously the soldiers are pretty much wearing the 37 webbing, that's 1937 issue webbing, which was considered quite modern at the time, it was sort of I wouldn't say revolutionary, but certainly it was a lot better to some of the other forces who were operating at the time. Even the Germans didn't have such a comfortable form of battle dress. So, um, you know, the British were slightly ahead on that one, if not in tactics, but certainly on uh, what the soldiers were wearing. Although, probably to the most keen-eyed, it always looked a bit bland, and uh, the British did used to dazzle these up a bit by just you know, putting in the odd bit of insignia, especially to do with the regiments and things on the shoulders, just to give it a little bit more of a glamorous look. The 37 weapon was kept really till about 1958, by the way, just um, it was quite practical, so the British hung in there with it. So, what else to say, really? Um, yeah, standard British uniform, really. We've got the gaiters there, we've got the scrim. Uh, I have to say, I did check out uh, Plastic Soldier, who were uh, pretty much certain they were still wearing the 1942, well, the 1940s Mark II helmet, which really it should have been the Mark III. Uh, on inspection, they're probably about right. It should really be. The Mark III looks more turtle shaped, and this one certainly, it's still got that old soup bowl sort of look. So. Um, I think, I really do think they're probably right on that, so um, it's a little bit of a fly in the ointment, but uh, not to worry. Uh, in terms of how these look in comparison to the Ravel British Infantry, uh, I think it's a really close call in terms of quality. The one bonus with this lot is they're doing a lot more, there's a lot more action in these, whereas the Ravel kit, um, 
it does lack in a bit of soldiers what they're doing and things I mean uh, if you check out that review if you haven't already just take a look at it there there's a few guys really not doing a great deal and in this set they're pretty much ready for action so um, on that front it is good uh, in comparison to the more modern airfix version of British infantry whereas obviously the quality won't be as good as the airfix British infantry they do lack a bit in the quality in terms of pricing uh, I don't think the airfix kit can be beaten I mean that would be literally less than half the price of um, the Caesar box and the Ravel kit so it's really up to you but um, yeah the airfix kit on price alone just really does does the bizzle on that one um, but these sets the Ravel and the Caesar set are mainly quality based and uh, as a result you will pay a little bit more so without further ado we shall have a look at these figures and I'll see how I'll present these obviously they're not on the sprue so I'll just see how I'm going to present that so here we go I'm going to try something different as regards the setting just because um, it is quite a dark grey and they're all not on the sprue so we'll have a go and see if this is going to work um, so this is what you get in here we have British soldier there with his looks like a Lee Enfield I would say that's a Lee Enfield for sure um, the helmet here has the scrim on top and um, in that sense you could probably just about call it a Mark III helmet um, the scrim does quite nicely hide it from that standard bowl sort of look, soup bowl look which the British helmets normally did have at the start of the war and uh, it does have a slight turtle type shape but that's mainly because the scrims hide in most of the helmet so you could probably get away with that one um, standard pose in that sense, I do like the proportions it's very well done um, I wouldn't say the rifle jumps out at me um, but I think it's still a good effort. Um, I do like the bases on these, it's quite defined, it's nice and rounded. Um, let's have a little look at that round here. And there we go, there's his um, 37 webbing. And you can just see there, there's part of the shovel, which I think was double edged as well, you could have a pickaxe as well and I think there's a slight look of a bayonet there he's not loaded with equipment like the Airfix and uh, Ravel set but you know I think that's not a bad not a bad little little soldier there I do think Ravel shades it on on a slight bit in the detail front uh, certainly on this evidence of this figure but um, that's the first figure so we'll have a look at uh, another one now so here we go here's another chap here he's got his Sten and he's just sort of taking a look there and just seeing what he's doing um, again it's not too bad what you will find is just about there you'll see that probably needs drilling out just if you're going to be an ultra perfectionist but uh, it's nothing too majorly wrong with that we'll spin them around And there you can probably see his kit. It's got a nice amount of kit on there. So again, another very usable pose. And uh, you wouldn't say he's in the thick of the fighting, but certainly that's what I would call, you know, someone who is least as prepared to fight. Next up, this is our chap with the Enfield. It's a little bit bent, which a few of the rifles were. And I think that's just more to do with the type of packaging it is. Like I say, they do come in a small sort of resealable bag, which is nice. So you can just pop them back in there when you're done to save them rattling about in a loose box. Again, um, very similar to the other chap there. It's just he's probably taking a shot. He's not too bad. He's not too bad. Not as good as what I expected, I think. I think... Um, not as good as I expected. I think when you're paying that money, these are upwards of £10, then, you know, it's quite possible you'd probably say something could have been a little bit better. But here's our chap advancing along the front. Um, again, we've got, if you go top-down view, 
you will see here you'd need to drill that out so a little bit of a shame but nothing major again it's not a bad pose he's advancing along and I always like to see um, a set with advancing troops I think it's very important they're not fighting all the time and two three four of those I think is fine I don't have any issue with that his shovel is pushed through his bag which I quite like it's something a little bit different and the shovel is clearly defined um, no problem there from me I quite like that so um, yeah no problem there and from the back he looks really quite good actually the helmet has got a nice bit of shadow just creeping down the back of his neck so it's quite well cast in that in my opinion and again he's holding a Lee Enfield rifle now I think this guy is what you would say is about the only runner in the box he is actually running along there with his Sten and that's about as good as you're going to get for a runner um, but he does have a modicum of uh, movement I would say his front foot is a little bit flat footed to actually achieve full movement but there you go and he's holding the Sten no backpack on this chap he's just pretty much running along with the bare essentials there but I've got not too much of a problem there at least we do have some chaps with uh, equipment on there we go so I quite like this chap um, looks like the proud Tommy and he's standing there very much to attention um, and I quite like that uh, it's a really good piece nicely detailed and uh, wouldn't look out of place maybe around uh, an HQ diorama or something like that um, but very very good quite like that very very nice no scrim on the helmet turn them around and again that's quite nice rifles just about coming out okay yeah I quite like that a jolly good pose now here we have our life boy flamethrower um, again if you go for the top down view you will see a little bit of filled in plastic there you can drill that out if you so wish and uh, that would solve that problem no scrim on the helmet but a nice a nice model of the flamethrower on the back um, it was in a donut shape this thing and the center of the donut would be the pressure valve and things like that just to adjust the pressure on it and to get the thing going like I say it's a 10 cartridge firer so on the device he's holding in his hands there'd be 10 holes in that and there, in there would be a cartridge and those would ignite per flame burst which would last about 10 seconds so it would spark it up but this particular one if it's a little bit damp there is a possibility it may not start up so but most flamethrowers in World War II were like that so nothing about that it does look pretty cool to me so you'll probably remember it on the movie uh, A Bridge Too Far uh, where these I think there's a Welshman or something goes for blow up a, a bunker with it so instead he blows up most of the bridge uh, but yeah like I say he's not too bad a little bit of a side view there have to say the version I saw was a lot shorter than that it is actually quite stubby um, and that looks a little bit long there but I could be wrong I could be wrong next we have what I would say is a Scottish officer he's wearing his Tam O'Shanter he's got his bino case to the left there and he's a very nice figure I quite like him uh, the British officers would genuinely do this just maybe alter a bit of headgear and in a way it sort of served as a slight bit of morale for the guys as well I mean when you're in masses of sort of boring type looking uniform sometimes it's good to perk the troops up when the officers wear something different and they can relate to that and then Monty was probably the forebearer of that um, with his different style hats and things like that so this is no different and this would also just give those Scottish regiments a little bit more uniqueness um, gone are the days where they'd go into battle with their kilts uh, so seeing the officers wear this hat um, where they couldn't obviously battle conditions they'd have to wear the helmets in 
maybe behind the lines that go to soft hats but um, you know nice uh, nice to see in a set I think so uh, retains the British uniqueness on that one there and he's, he's, he's pointing very well I think that's quite a good sculpt yeah and again looks very good nice creasing in the trousers so very good they're all very well proportioned these figures so proportion wise it's very good Da, 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 da. So here we have a guy throwing a grenade. You can't really see much of the grenade in there. Uh, sometimes with a really good quality set you can see the sort of creases in the grenade but there's no such uh, segments in this one. Uh, looks like he's got a sten and he's thrown that grenade. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best pose in the world. It does look slightly static. However, it's not bad. And if I just turn them that way, you can see the magazine of the Sten. And uh, again, there's his entrenchment tools. Uh, no backpack for this guy. But it's very rare. I don't think I've seen a guy throwing a grenade with a backpack yet. Uh, although obviously it would have happened. But, uh, you know, you don't want to be carrying too much weight into a firefight, do you? So um, it's probably less than likely, but not unlikely. Um, but again, he's not too bad, well proportioned. Now here we have our guy with the Piat and um, again it's got the one rod which is fine no problem there and he does actually sit rather nicely his hand there at the very front just you know is perfect he really does just stick to that floor so there was no problem he just like a little limpet there and he's firing that slightly upwards looks good from the front and uh, nice shadowing with the helmet it's well sculpted fingers are coming through very well yeah I'd say I quite like that one I think he's quite good flip him over entrenchment tool nice little piece here's our guy with the Bren it hasn't actually worked too well this Bren sculpt um, it's a little bit the handle for detaching the barrel when it overheats uh, is a little bit moulded with the uh, the magazine um, the gun itself it's a little bit sort of chunky looking and out of proportion ish um, so that one didn't 100% work I don't think from this angle you can see a little bit more there you can just see his other hand cupping the butt of the Bren or well, at least I hope you can I've got no way of knowing until I replay this so let's hope we get it right this time flip him over a trenching tool again can't see any extra mags for the for the Bren so that was my review of Caesar's a British Army World War II uh, not a bad set um, I have to say it's just up to you what you go for Budget wise, Airfix, very, very good, no problem there. Uh, these ones in the Ravel set, um, they're up there, top price, you're going to pay over £10 for those sets. And um, it's up to you. If you want a fighting set, this is the set for you. If you want a well sculpted, um, decent enough, ploddy set, the Ravel set is, is quite good. The sculpting is probably a little bit higher the quality is a little bit higher what the Ravel set does lack in is probably just enough guys doing stuff so but as in terms of a fighting set this one will will actually cover you there and like I say if your budget's a little bit more reduced there's nothing wrong with that Airfix set that would do you that's the new Airfix set that was I think it was released about 2008 if my memory serves me correct uh, so you know where there was a dearth where there was absolutely a barren wilderness of British army sets were a lot more in the way of spoilt now so you know it's entirely up to you guys what you think and what suits your budget and whatever you want to do really and so um, yeah this set is not a bad set and that's 40 figures at 172 and there's enough different types of poses in there to cover you it's it's it really is not a bad set at all so thank you for watching 
and uh, I got this on eBay as you can see the box is in a very good state because go with eBay they protect the merchandise Amazon like I say I don't know how many crush boxes I've had shoved through the letterbox so but eBay yeah this is not a bad not a bad set and it came well packaged so I'm very happy so thank you for watching and uh, I hope sometime to do maybe a, a top 10 or something of British infantry sets sometime which would be quite good to see um, but for now we'll see you very soon thanks for watching bye